hard work, good strategies, persistence, dedication, and input from others. Where focus goes, energy flows. So focus your energy on continuous learning and stop wasting time thinking about looking smart. Build resistance, build vulnerability, build courageousness, and face adversity with a smile. Become comfortable with uncomfortable. You know, the only person that you need to prove anything to is you. Imperfect action trumps perfect inaction. Stop wasting time and get on with it. Failure is part of learning, so start learning by taking action. Simone, Lord, oh hi, well you're going to introduce me, go for it. I am, this is supposed to be my hot seat. I'm still not comfortable with giving the reins over to you, but welcome, it is Wednesday, we are back for the Business Life Hot Seat. Now you are holding all the controls of internet. We have discovered that my regional internet and my children on devices were causing quite a bit of disruption to our live broadcast. So you now, Mr. Lavolsi, have all of the controls of Ecamm and I'm really struggling with this. <laughs> and 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 so you should because I get to do really cool stuff like Yay. <laughs> I could love I love being annoying. It's so cool. <laughs> and you are in one of those moods today. So I'll be interested to see where this call goes. Now, we are here to drop some value bombs and share and inspire to our audience and our viewers. And today we wanted to talk all about reinventing your business. So we put up a poll on your LinkedIn the other week and we asked business owners if they spend time reinventing their business. And 86% of people commented yes, that they do. So let's jump into the first question that I have for you today, Christian. And that is, as a business owner, should you allocate time to think about how you can change and adapt your business? Is that something? Okay, so yes, indeed, the time had just started and I'm going to about to tell you. Uh, okay, yes, you, you should um, always allocate time to um, to change and I don't like the word change. I, I like to use the word transform, right? So it's our duty as business owners to constantly be looking for transformation. Uh, but I, I'm not talking about transforming what's not broken, right? It's, a, it's really about being innovative and having an entrepreneurial mindset. Um, adapting, you know, if you've got an entrepreneurial mindset, a growth mindset, you'll always be looking to adapt. And um, adaptability is one of the most important forgotten skills of leadership. Uh, and that is because, um, you know, <laughs> we just went through a thing called COVID where, you know, they shut down the entire world. Um, and uh, and obviously, you know, people had to adapt. And the people that didn't adapt, they... they um, well, they didn't die, uh, but their businesses adapt or die. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but you know that we've got a lot of companies now liquidating that have been zombie companies because um, the taxpayer funded uh, all these people to um, buy new televisions in their homes instead of adapting to their new business environments and and growing their businesses. You know, JobKeeper, in my opinion, was a freaking disaster, and we are now. Um, uh, you know, dealing with the consequences of that with, you know, 7 8% inflation. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But as business owners, we still got to adapt to that. We've got to adapt to the, the rising interest rates now. And, you know, commercial loans are getting harder. I mean, I'm on a, I'm on a board. Uh, I chair five independent boards. And, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to raise capital at the moment to build new facilities for manufacturing. And banks are coming in with, you know, valuations that, are 30% lower than last year's market price. And it's like, mate, are you joking? Like, how on earth are you coming up with these valuations? And it's because it's serving them. You know, banks are out there trying to make super profits and, you know, clearly two to $3 billion a quarter is insufficient to keep their shareholders uh, happy. Uh, mm -hmm. Mind you, I'm a shareholder, so I'm not sure what I'm complaining about. Yeah. 
Well, it is certainly an interesting time, isn't it? But whenever I speak to anyone, especially from like my parents' generation, all I hear is this is nothing. When they were our age, they were dealing with 18%. So <laughs> we've uh, just got to ride the wave, right? That's kind of what it's like with business and life. Absolutely. So that kind of leads into my second question. And you did touch on it in your first question. I'm actually really fearing the more the more you work out on all these settings, it's going to turn into I'm very- trying to, I'm trying to work out why my camera is confused like, about where I am. Sorry. Yeah, doing an autofocus type thing. Well, yeah. I, I oh, there, 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 stay there. I'm yeah, not going to move. Don't move. Don't move. <laughs> all right. So my question for you, my second question for you today is, what are your thoughts on the saying, don't fix what isn't broken? when it comes to changing things inside your business. Now you did just talk about this a little bit, but let's dive into this a little bit deeper. Like, what does that really mean? Should we be looking to adapt and change things that are working? Because sometimes we get stagnant in the same processes or the same thing. We're doing the same shit over and over again. Or is it, if it works, then don't touch it, let it go. Okay, so it's interesting. I obviously don't know the questions that you're gonna ask me and I'm like, Oh, yeah, right. Um, look, um, as business owners, as business owners, we get bored quickly because we're in that business doing the repetitive tasks over and over again. Um, mm -hmm. Anything that's repeatable or can be done more than once should be automated. Uh, so that's what I mean about adapting in your business and automating. But, um, but. You know, I had this conversation with uh, with someone today, which was, you know, why are you trying to change your copy, your ads, like on a monthly basis, right? Mm -hmm. Like if it's working, right? Just because you're bored of it, if the yeah. actual data hasn't changed, why are you stuffing around with it? Mm -hmm. You know me, that's not the words I used, but clearly there was a few Fs we'll in there. We'll keep and, a PG today. <laughs> You know, and I'm, I'm trying to keep it G-rated, but you already used the S word, um, so it's on you. But uh, but the thing is, I, I, I sat back and I was like, "Why?" I mean, we have it as as business owners, we have a propensity to want new, and that's why I said it's not about change; it's about transformation. If you've got, um, you know, if your system is working, is generating you leads, it's making you money. What are you doing messing with it? You know, and I'll never forget a guy by the name of Jeff Bickenden who wrote uh, some of my first ever ads that won a whole bunch of awards for radio, um, promoting one of my businesses. And I actually said to him after 18 months, man, I'm so sick of hearing this ad. He goes, mm. it's won all these awards. It's brilliant. Your business is booming and everybody knows who you are. Yeah. What more do you want? Like, why do you want to change it? You know, we didn't change it for five and a half years years that's how effective it was wow. for five and a half years i mean this ad made us probably seven or eight million dollars worth of sales mm. so you, you kind of go you know mm. and, and and that's when i first learned that you just don't change things for the sake of changing them yeah okay so i know the timer went but let's just flip the switch on that a little bit what about when it's not working like how long should you kind of wait before you go you know what this something needs to change now i know you've talked to us about only changing one thing at a time before but how long do you really leave it before you go all right something's got to it depends it looks i mean that's a, that's a tough question because it really depends on the medium you're using like if we're talking about if we're talking about uh, operational systems uh mm. you will you need to entrench them for a period of time right you know habits take six to eight weeks so if they're people related you can't chop and change if they're marketing related and you're using, say, Facebook ads or you're using uh, Google uh, AdWords, then you've got a lot of data available at your fingertips. You could potentially change things within seven to 10 days if mm -hmm. something is not working. In fact, you can change it even sooner. But, you know, Facebook have now introduced this learning phase, which sometimes mm -hmm. the thing could be in learning for a week, right, and not getting you anything because sometimes we narrow the uh, market size that we want too short and Facebook clearly doesn't want you to make way too much money. So they call it the learning phase to screw you around for a bit. But you know, uh, again, you know, I say to people, those platforms, you have zero control. They keep telling us that you have more control than you've ever had before. But the reality is we have no control. 
you know, they could yeah. turn off the whole thing tomorrow and uh, all the money that you've invested on your digital media uh, assets is gone. And that's what we still say that, um, you know, email is still king, you know. Yeah. And in the US, they're trying to change the email laws. Um, again, mm. I, I, I would argue, and this is a conspiracy theory that I'm making up, uh, let me for, you know, let me be very clear. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, the people that are um, lobbying against uh, electronic digital marketing uh, are actually the big social networks because they yeah. don't want uh, people to have control outside of their platforms. Now, that is a huge outlandish statement, and I have made it up. Uh, so let's be really clear before someone decides that you know I've, uh, I've, I've I'm creating a stir. But but the thing is, you've got to ask yourself those questions. You know, and all I'm saying to you as our listeners, our loyal, dedicated listeners of two people, uh, no, uh, that's you and I, Simone. Um, <laughs> but the, the, the reality of it is you we've got to find ways to take control. And, you know, phone numbers, email addresses is still the uh, key uh, way of owning the data yourself and having control. But, you know, we also have done a lot of research. People give you the wrong phone number. They give you the yeah. wrong email address. They... They're using a you know an email address that they never check, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's getting harder and harder for businesses uh, in 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 the market. But also, that is all part of adapting. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the I, challenge. I, think I answered your question. Yeah, you did. You did. Thank you. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Question three. Now uh, we we talk about this term moonshot moonshot thinking and I actually don't know how popular of a term this is to if our audience will know what that is uh, but my question for you my third and final question for today is who should be involved with the moonshot thinking for the future direction of your business like what level of your teams do you have involved in coming up with new ideas or adaptions and and those types of things Everyone in your organization should be involved in moonshot thinking because the whole idea is to um, create an inclusive environment where people feel comfortable with bringing uh, things to the forefront of the organization. And moonshot thinking uh, is also around solving complex problems, not just creating wonderful opportunities for us to dream about and aim for the moon. Um, so I'm a big believer that everybody should be involved in in the development, the vision of the company, uh, because then they also own it. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, someone like me, who's you know, an independent chairman of, of a whole bunch of companies, I don't have an operational view of those organizations. So I can set the culture of the company. I can set the uh, strategy of that company. But the people uh, in the trenches need to own it. Without them owning it, um, there's no way that a board can, you know, uh, impact uh, the mm -hmm. transformation required for for being a growth firm growing 25 percent year on year uh, but above all that too um, you know those people that are at the cold face they're the ones that know the, how to solve the problems you know too yeah. many people um, look to leaders and and say you have to have all the answers I mean I'm I'm one of those leaders that has a lot of answers because I'm an advisor but mm. I actually have a lot of answers because I go down into the trenches and have conversations with people, even as a even as chairman of boards. Uh, you know, uh, you 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 know, you find me in the manufacturing sheds in uh, sort of high vis, um, walking around having a conversation with people um, in whether it's the paint shop or whether it's uh, the welding yards or whether it's the assembly lines. Uh, if it's at the hospital, I'll um, you know, ask, you know, uh, the clinicians and the doctors, you know, questions about patient care and where, why? Because I have a genuine interest in those businesses. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to gather the pulse. Now, you know, you won't find a lot of chairmen in organizations going to do that. Um, but I love it. You know, I'm, I'm a business owner and, uh, and I'm also a director of companies and I know how to discharge my fiduciary duties and, but I also like to still get in there and, and meet the people. I mean, you know, you know for example, uh, big publicly owned companies, they, they're so, directors are so disconnected. You know, mm. to me, I think a lot of directors, when you get a new role, should spend a whole day, if not more than two day, or three days, getting to know the company, how it operates, the, the heartbeat of the company. So you can 
you know, you can make better risk assessments and provide give mm -hmm. better governance advice. But, you know, that's that's one end of the spectrum. But even if you're a business of five or six people, I mean, you know, if you're if you're let's say you're a founder and you're the you know, you're the tech head, you don't know what your customers are thinking unless you're having that conversation with them. But your salesperson will tell you whether or not you're you know you're in alignment with what your customers need. So everybody should be involved in moonshot thinking, and and more importantly, as an owner of a business, as a leader, always check in with your people. Always check in with your people. Yeah, such an important message, it really is. And we also know that the more collaboration that you have with your teams, the more invested they are into the vision and mission and purpose of your organisation and they will really come along that journey with the business owner as well, which is super important. Well, Christian Wilson, another episode of The Hot Seat. Can you believe we're at week 34? We've actually been nearly doing this hot seat series for over six months now. Um, wow. I, I think we need people to 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 just tell us whether or not they want to keep listening to it. So you got to drop a comment because, you know, um, as you know, uh, 20 minutes of my time these days is is, is very hard to find. Um, and, and if we're not providing value, then I don't know why we should uh, do it. Um, there's been a streaming error. Uh, streaming to Christian Lovelsley LinkedIn stopped because of an error. Do you want to end the broadcast or continue without Christian Lavolsi? Well, I don't want to end the broadcast. I'm going to continue without myself. Um, <laughs> that's wonderful, Ecam. Oh, so you close. guys, congratulations, you know. Um, yeah. uh, now, you are super busy, but we have our retreat coming up in two weeks, and this is what is absolutely filling my days at the moment, getting everything ready. Now, this is uh, only our closed community. So this isn't open to the public. This is only people who are already working with you, uh, Christian, or in one of our programs, one of our community programs. And we are super pumped. We're all coming to you this time. You're not traveling for, for a little while, for two weeks. Uh, we're all coming to you in the Adelaide Hills. I can't wait. It's gonna be an awesome weekend. Yeah, look, uh, it's 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 pretty pretty cool actually. We've got we've got yeah about twenty five percent of our clients coming, um, which is which is good considering we only decided last minute to invite um, the wider community to the Momentum Weekend. Uh, something we might do each year, um, and, uh, and and we'll wait and see. But no, it's it is really exciting. My family are pretty happy that I'm uh, that I'm not having to. Uh, to travel, especially now that I uh, changed my travel plans for next week. Um, hi, Blake. There's Blake, our, res our, res our resident DJ. Um, yes. So uh, Simone bribes Blake with an iPad, if you haven't noticed, uh, just so she can get a spare 17 minutes and 32 seconds. Um, <laughs> but uh, but look, uh, yeah, no, it, it's really exciting time, Simone. And uh, you know, we've got a wonderful, vibrant team culture. Um, We've got incredible clients. Like I couldn't, I'm, you know, I always say it, I pinch myself how blessed we are. Um, you know, we've had some of my one-on-one -on -one advisory clients have been with me now five years. And, um, you know, I, it, it's something that I'm really proud of in terms of being able to be on that journey with them, uh, mm -hmm. achieving, doing, uh, but also, you know, watching, you know, uh, you know, 40 year old family businesses that I've now been a part of for three or four years and, watching them grow and flourish and 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 you know when people go away on leave and they're like thank you i'm like why i guess well you've helped us get me to a point where i can take six weeks off and not have to worry and and the worst part is i missed you and i'm like oh my god no no i don't need more people missing me um no but it is it's really wonderful and i and i, I feel so blessed and i i think that that's a really important thing is to have an abundance of gratitude in your life uh, if you want to do it. But look, Simone, I actually have to go. So right. I'm going to put the outro video on. Thank you, everybody. Well, Bless you all. And here is a message from Adrian. Please listen to it. They're pretty cool. Thank you. Christian is a game changer. Hi, I'm Adrian Lee from GrowthLink Coaching and Consulting. I started working with Christian in August 2020 as his LinkedIn growth consultant. We worked together on his LinkedIn brand for about 12 months 
before becoming business partners in Growth Outsourced late 2021. Christian is a hidden genius. He helped me break through a significant financial target by restructuring my growth consulting online business offer. I don't know of any one person who can give you so much focus, clarity, and structure to live your purpose and get shit done. He holds you accountable to your words and gives you the tough love when you need it. I love his no BS approach to business and life. Everyone needs a Christian Lavolsi in their life. Do whatever you have to to work with Christian. This is just the beginning for us and I am super pumped to continue growing together. Thanks again, Christian.